Hi, everybody. I'm Sam Kaufman, and I am teaching the multifractional extraction of medicinal plants uh, together with a couple of TAs that will be helping as well and doing some demonstration videos. We will be talking and teaching you how to get the best quality extraction out of your medicinal plants that you can, uh, along with actually some formulation concepts that are based upon the same type of uh, chemistry, bioavailability, solubility uh, uh, topics that we'll be talking through in the extraction, uh, as well as uh, how to use herbs that we're extracting in the best way. So it's kind of a full spectrum uh, course about a full spectrum concept of getting everything that we can, the most usable, most medicinal, most potent uh, medicine out of our plants that we can. And what this does is it opens up a whole world of um, of kitchen chemistry uh, to to you and for you uh, in regards to making your your extractions. This will uh, result in you making better extractions that are multifractional, but it also results in you making better choices and better extractions that may not be multifractional at all. You'll just have a better grasp and a better understanding of how to get the best medicine out of your plants, whether it's simply a, a strictly a uh, you know percolation tincture using alcohol, whether it's do I use 80% alcohol? Do I use 40% alcohol? Whether it's a maceration tincture, a fresh maceration or a dried maceration tincture, whether it's a glycerite, whether it's a, 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 um, an acetum, you know, a vinegar extract, whatever those, those concepts are that you apply, you can take them apart, you can put them all together and you're gonna get a lot better idea of how to do this. You're gonna be a better, some better medicine maker when we get done with this. The reasons that we're doing this uh, are, are as you can imagine, uh, that we want to get the full spectrum of constituents. So constituents are the compounds or the, the molecular constituents that are, in, that are in our medicinal plants. Now, most of the time we want as much of all of those constituents as we can get even though we know that plants have active constituents, right? We know that if you pull up, if you're looking for, um, you know, a golden seal, um, uh, you know, extraction that you're looking for a lot of times for berberine and looking for hydrostine and some of these constituents that we call active constituents. But the truth of the matter is, as you, as you probably already know, by the time you're watching this, and if, especially if you've taken any of my classes, that we have tens of thousands of constituents in every plant. There are, there are all types of different constituents, right? Flavonoids and alkaloids and terpenes and all different types of constituents that we give a taxonomy to based upon their molecular structure. Okay. Now, uh, Sometimes we want a lot of specific, maybe active constituents. Sometimes we want to reduce maybe some that are toxic constituents. But for the most part, most of the time, what I try to achieve anyway, as a medicine maker and as an herbalist, as a clinical herbalist, is to get the, the maximum amount, the best uh, representative, uh, you know, in that bottle of whatever my fluid extract is of what that plant is. The reason for this is that there is a large amount of research and certainly a large amount of empirical clinical knowledge that shows we get best uh, results when we use the entire plant. Most of the time, we get better results. Even if you think that it's better to have a standardized extract of a certain amount of a, of a you know, allicin out of, out of a, a garlic, for instance, uh, the truth of the matter is you're getting generally a better quality medicinal product if you can if you can take the full spectrum of the plant most of the time the problem is that most of that on many, much of the time you can't not mo most of the time but but some to maybe you know a lot depending on the plant and depending on our experience we don't get everything out that we think that we, that we would like and so there could be a wide variance of actual potency of the same plant in two different tinctures for instance depending on how they were, were extracted uh, so that's what we're going for here is, is full uh, spectrum constituent extraction if we can get it. And then in that process, of course, understanding and using the solvents that we're, we're working with so that we're better at using those individually and in, in pieces anyway, right? That's, that's what we're going for here. So some of the solvents that we're going to be using here, or really all of the solvents we're going to be using here are going to be water, ethyl alcohol, or just, you know, ETOH or uh, grain or sugar cane or whatever it may be, or the, the highest percentage alcohol you can get. Glycerin, vinegar, honey, vegetable oil, isopropyl alcohol, obviously not for internal use, but we're going to do an, uh, an alcohol salve, an external topical alcohol salve. And we're not going to use, but we will at least discuss DMSO as well. 
Okay, so these are the these are both solvents and carriers, and the way that we're going to extract the um, you know the menstruum or the solvent that we're going to use to extract the constituents of the herb, but also they're going to be the carrier uh, for that herb as well when we're done, right? Um, so this the big the big you know set of questions that people come in with and to this to a class like this is you know what do I use and what order do I use? Do I, do I do alcohol first? Do I do water first? Do I do glycerin first? Do I even need glycerin? Do I need water? You know what do I need here? Um, and where does heat come into this? And how many marks do I do? I use just you know one and then I keep using that same mark or do I use a new fresh mark each time? Those are the kinds of questions that we're going to answer in this course. That's the whole purpose of this course is to give you a, a good idea of how to build your own extract starting with, as an example, this is a very simple example. This is not, you know, this is, this is not every time the way this is going to work, but a simple example that works a lot of the time for certain types of herbs. We have a water decoction first. At some point, we're going to add glycerin to that, uh, but we want to be able to get the extraction, um, capabilities of glycerin as well, right? We're not just adding glycerin just for the effect of adding glycerin. What that would do is dilute. That's one of the big problems that I, I have with um, what some people, you know, that I've known in the past and people that make medicine do is they might just add glycerin in at the end and it just dilutes your, your solution as opposed to using it as a solvent. Glycerin is a decent solvent. In some cases, it's a great solvent, depending on what it is we're trying to get out. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and then maybe at the end of that, we're gonna go ahead and run the whole thing through alcohol, maybe a 90% or a 95% ethyl alcohol. And then when we're done, we have our result. We have our final product, okay? This is how we would build an extract. Now that's, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this and we're gonna do many variations of this. And we're gonna add other solvents into the process as well. And we're gonna do this in different orders, right? So uh, this isn't just, you know, one way of doing things. There are many ways many, many ways to do multifractional extracts. And a lot of it is experimentation, it's trial and error. Uh, the best that I can do is give you my, uh, my experience over the last many years that I have been doing and experimenting with multifractional extracts. Uh, uh, one of our TAs who, especially Adam, who's, who's done a really good job of, of helping me to, um, uh, what's the word I want to use, uh, uh, to, to, to write down or to log uh, the, the results and what works better. Does it work better to do just a straight up alcohol extraction? Does it work better to do a multifractional? If it does, does it work better to do alcohol first? What percentage of alcohol and so forth? I would love to have, you know, we probably have 350 herbs or so in our, in our uh, apothecary. I would love to have a chart out for every single herb in the apothecary. And I can't tell you that I have done that, of course, because I haven't. Uh, but I have done dozens, uh, maybe a hundred herbs that I have that I have worked with multifractional. Out of that, maybe sixty or seventy that I say, look, this is how we do this herb all the time now. You know, we're never going to do this again unless we absolutely have to as a as a, a single step extraction. This is always going to be multifract because it is so much more potent. It's so much better. It's better medicine overall, not just the potency of it. Is in regards to like, oh wow, you can take less of this herb because it, it has a stronger effect, you know, has stronger of the same effects. It has actually different effects. It has a wider spectrum effects. A good example is chaparral. There's a big difference between the classic 90 or 95% chaparral extract that everybody takes versus a multifract that's got a water step in there too. There's a huge difference between those two in terms of its efficacy and the, the spectrum of, of, of uh, medicinal effects that it has as well. So what I guess I'm telling you is um, I'm, you know, I'm walking up a trail, you know, that's kind of a single track uh, trail that not very many people walk up. And I'm maybe, you know, a couple of miles up that trail. And you, if you're taking this class, are probably, hopefully, the reason you're taking it is you're at the start of that trail. And I can tell you the stuff up to there, but I've got about 10 or 15 or 100 miles ahead of me that I haven't even explored. So this is one of those things where you can take this information and you can run with it and you can do stuff that I've never even considered uh, or work with herbs that I haven't been able to work, work with and do your own charting and your own logging and your own, you know, get your own results. Okay, but this will give you all those tools and, and then some in, in order to be able to do that. 
Okay, so what we're giving you in this course then is we're giving you some herbs. So we're giving you a whole bunch of herbs that we'll mail to you. Uh, we're, of course, you're going to be able to download off of the in internet classroom spreadsheets and charts and, and informational uh, handouts, basically, right? Uh, lectures in this format, you know, PDF lectures where, or I'm sorry, uh, PowerPoint lectures where, you know, I'm, you're seeing me and I'm talking to you and I've got some slides. Um, and then demonstration videos are a really big part of this. So there's a lot of different demonstration videos showing you how to do this, right? Both myself and Adam and Jocelyn will be will be showing you uh, hands-on, you know, how do we do this? And then of course, you know, like any of our classes, live Q&A through both our, our um, open office hours as well as Q&A for the, for the course itself. All of these things go together to be able to give you, uh, you know, a really um, uh, complete uh, course online as much as I can possibly provide you uh, and as close as I can give to you as what you would get on site. And in fact, in some ways, we're actually covering a lot of stuff that we don't do on site. For those who aren't familiar, we have this, this is part of our Apothecaries program, right? The Apothecaries program consists of two 12-week semesters. Uh, one is for internal medicine, one is for external medicine. Those are online. Those two 12-week semesters are online. In addition, it consists of six three-day intensives, hands-on intensives that are on site at our school. We have a 50 acre campus north of San Antonio. We have a classroom there. We have uh, kitchens and stuff. And so we do our classes there, our hands-on intensives there in whatever subject it is. In this case, our apothecarist. Those hands-on intensives include the multifractional, uh, food as medicine, mushroom medicine, you know, mycology medicine, uh, internal, external, and uh, essential oils, I think are the six. And so those, uh, all make up that whole thing makes up the full apothecaries program well because of COVID-19 we're going online with with our three-day hands-on workshops this year and next year and honestly in doing so and going through all the material we're, we're giving a bunch more material that we never were, had time to or are able to do on site while the on-site gives you that chance to actually you know physically work with materials in front of each other in front of me and to see me do it that's nice and it's great, but to be honest with you, um, it probably has somewhere between 30 and, and maybe even 50% less information that you're getting that you're gonna get in this because I can do this now, all of it here, and, and, and between Adam and Jocelyn and myself, we can give you tons of demos, hours of video that you just wouldn't get. You wouldn't get that information on site because we're so busy you know, with just putting things together and dealing with the whole class and clean up and all the stuff that we gotta do to be able to go from project to project to project. Okay, so this is uh, it's a great way to do it, honestly, and I think uh, you're really going to enjoy this course a lot. Uh, so this is what it's made up of. Now, the thing I would recommend for most of you who don't already have this information, if you don't have any kind of chemistry background, you maybe you've never even had, say, undergraduate chemistry, uh, I would really recommend that you take our co-requisite, which is, it's not a co I shouldn't say co-requisite, it's not required. This is not at all required, but if you want more out of this class, I would recommend you take Lisa, the, the course that we're offering through Lisa. Lisa teaches, is part of our faculty, as well as, of course, the director of the, uh, the CSCH, the Color School of Clinical Herbalism. Amazing teacher, an amazing uh, phytochemist, uh, just an, has incredible experience in this uh, subject and is able to break down some of these, you know, graduate and certainly undergraduate level chemistry terms and chemistry concepts, phytochemistry, for anybody, anybody off the street who doesn't even have a background in it at all, you'll get it. By the time you get done with our course, you'll be like, oh my God, all this stuff has just like totally come together for me. So I would recommend that because this, you know, is, is one of the modules of her phytochemistry. We took that entire course that uh, she was teaching, uh, which took a full year, I believe it was a year, and uh, we broke it into modules. So people can just, you know, uh, cherry pick the pieces or they can take the whole thing module at a time. This module has all of, this, all of the same things we're gonna be talking about, but in more chemistry detail that we don't have time to talk about. Polarity and, and uh, you know, the whole idea of solubility, what it is, different types of, 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 um, of um, constituents, different types of molecular forms and, and you know, the, the concept of a dipole and a dipole moment and how that all relates to polarity, for instance, at a molecular level. Uh, some of these different concepts all come together then in more of an intellectual and more of a, you know, on, you know lecture format, of course, with many handouts and that type of thing. But then you can really see the depth, a lot more depth to what we're doing hands-on 
And you'll have a lot of aha moments, you know, like, oh, my God, aha, I, I understand now why you were talking about alcohol as, you know, and, and the specific polarity and the dipole moment and all of that. That's starting to make sense now, you know, or we're going to do, you know, we're, we're maybe um, uh, mixing an oil and an alcohol, you know, what do you need to do? How do we emulsify that? And we will do that because there are, there are some herbs where we get a better oil fraction out. And then, but we want to preserve it. And we also want an alcohol fraction. We want to put that together. How do we do that? Okay, so that's my recommendation, uh, but you don't have to do that. Uh, we actually have a special, you know, not to make this an infomercial, but we do have a special going on where we put those two together. Uh, I think we call it the Advanced Medicine Makers uh, Boot Camp in order to be able to give you a chance to, to take these for, you know, a reduced price together, you know, so that's, that's out there if you want that. And if you don't want it, no problem. Uh, this is, you know, you're going to get plenty in this course too. Uh, but before we uh, move on, and just for the introduction here, let's step into the apothecary and let me just show you uh, some of the things that we're going to be working with, some of the solvents that you'll need to provide. We can't send you the solvents, obviously, right? We're, and, and, uh, and that's impossible. But the solvents are very easy for you to find. And they're things you probably we already have and if you're making any kind of medicine you already have all of this stuff so let's talk about that and we'll talk about some of the equipment a very basic kitchen equipment that you have for sure uh, if you have any kind of kitchen you'll have it uh, but then also some of the things that you don't have probably won't have and don't have to have but I still want to show you I want to show you how to use them and you may be the kind of person like me where you're like oh my god I got to go get a soxal extractor now you know and I can tell you how much it's going to cost and where to get the best ones and all of that and I can demonstrate all of that for you too so let's step into the apothecary and, uh, and go ahead and take care of all of that. All right, hi everybody. So I'm now sitting in the apothecary, a very crowded apothecary. We're busy, we are so busy with a bunch of different stuff, a lot of orders and a lot of courses going on that we have to package herbs up. Not uh, the least of which is this particular course you're watching right now, uh, that this is an introduction to because we've got to send a lot of herbs off. So I pardon the mess, but that's kind of how it gets when we've got three or four different courses we're packaging things up for and orders coming in and blah, blah, blah. So here we are in the apothecary to be able to talk through some of the things that we need to be, uh, you know, kind of create our own workspace to be able to do these multifractional extracts. And I want to talk first and foremost really about the solvents because these are the things you're going to have to provide. We're giving you herbs and we're giving you some of the tools, uh, other tools as well, but we're not giving you the solvents. It would be impossible to do that, to ship all of that stuff. So I'll talk through some of that. This is also a reason we're going to talk about solvents and solvency. Uh, and be, this is another reason why it's a really good idea, if you can, to take this course hand in hand with Lisa Ganora's uh, solvents and solvency um, module. I think it's module three out of her phytochemistry course that we are offering. Uh, in fact, we're doing them hand in hand as a, as a discount if you do them both. I think it's called the, the Medicine Maker, Advanced Medicine Makers Boot Camp which it really is because by the time you get done with both of these things, you're gonna have a really good idea, not only of the science behind what you're doing, the chemistry behind it, but you're also gonna have a great idea of layering these things on top of each other to actually make medicine that is far superior to just single solvent medicine extraction. Okay, so let's talk through some of these solvents and talk about what we're gonna do, you know, briefly, at least with them. Uh, if I can um, get this to turn back around. Okay, so starting over here on my right, let's see, let's just start all the way over on my right. We have, we have glycerin, okay? So uh, I usually get the glycerin in a, um, uh, you know, in bulk. We, we buy the glycerin in huge bulk amounts, but here's some that's just sitting right there in a mason jar. Uh, and we're going to dilute that a little bit, uh, but it's, it's going to be part of what we do, and it gets diluted anyway as part of what we do. Glycerin is extremely important in most multifractional extractions because it is our, uh, it's going to, to uh, it's going to stabilize our precipitation. That, that is oftentimes what's going to happen is this precipitation. Okay, next over we have vinegar. Now vinegar, uh, of course we could use uh, distilled vinegar, white vinegar, or apple cider vinegar. Uh, I like to use apple cider vinegar. And of course, more organic is always better, so we can do that. Uh, vinegar plays a big role in our extractions as well, especially when we're trying to pull out nutrients. We're trying to pull out uh, some of the different constituents that we'll talk about that are not going to come out very well in alcohol or water or glycerin. We, we also will work with vinegar. Now, anytime we have vinegar, we usually are working with honey. Uh, this is a, this is just a honey actually we bought on the way back from New Mexico at some place and it's probably not one that I'm going to use but it's one just to show honey. Uh, when we have vinegar and honey together we make an oxymel but more importantly with honey the big question and the big the big concept that we're going to talk a lot about is using honey as a solvent. Now here we're not talking about the um, 
you know, the medicinal qualities of honey, because we're going to probably, you know, a lot of that is based upon the enzymes in the honey itself. We're going to destroy those enzymes. We're heating the honey to use it as a solvent, and honey is an amazing solvent. Of course, it has some other properties in, its, in it as well, uh, but honey is one of those solvents that kind of bridges the world sometimes between water and alcohol and even to, somewhat to the non-polar side to the oils. So I love using honey as a solvent. I love to mix when we're doing vinegar. We almost always use honey. It's for, in terms of taste, it's awesome. And it's one of those ones we're going to use as well. So you're going to need some honey. Uh, next over here, I've got us uh, an alcohol. Now I just grabbed a bottle. We keep our, our alcohols in a bunch of different uh, percentages by volume. This one, as you can see, says 70% by volume. This is... Um, this is normally what I use, and, and depending on the state you live in, you may or may not be able to do this. I like to use, uh, we start with 90 or 95% grain alcohol, okay, or, or corn, corn uh, you know, is usually what we go with, or it can be sugar cane, it can be, uh, you know, any, any um, variety of different alcohols that you want, but normally the percentage that I want is to be a 90 um, 90 to 95 percent if you can't do that that's okay if you end up with the, the the most the strongest concentration of alcohol you can buy maybe lower than that maybe 70 75 percent somewhere in that range and that's okay too if we have to do that we'll talk a little bit more about that as well uh then to the left of that is our isopropyl alcohol we are going to do one external salve uh this this course we're not going to do everything else is internal but i want to just i want to give you the concept of extracting an alcohol and then evaporating the alcohol off in another way and we use isopropyl alcohol for that it's a lot cheaper it evaporates off a lot easier and so we're going to do an we're going to do an alcohol salve basically is what we're going to do so this is going to be for external use only obviously isopropyl alcohol is very much uh you know very toxic uh internally but we're going to evaporate all of it off and and end up with what we need in our in our salve right uh we've got oil here of course we're going to need some form of oil whether it's olive oil or grapeseed oil or whatever uh type of oil you like to use now, we're using the oil for a few things. Of course, as I mentioned, we're going to do an aura oil, but we're also going to talk about emulsification for internal type of, uh, of extracts. And we're going to actually use, um, I guess I've got it over here on the side, uh, that I'll be sending you. Uh, you don't have to, you don't have to, these two things you do not have to buy. You don't have to buy gum arabic powder or, 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 um, or xanthan gum. I'm going to ship those to you in the, right, in the proper um, uh, ratios for you to be able to use, to be able to stabilize the emulsification that we're doing for internal use because there are some herbs that work really well when you extract them in more of an oil base and then, uh, and then mix that with your alcohol. So you have an alcohol and you have an oil and you can mix those and emulsify them and you can stabilize that emulsification then as well, okay? And then salt uh, is something we'll talk a little bit about. So there's, there's places where salt works really well, especially depending on what we're using this tincture for or this, this extract for. What part of the body are we trying to get it to? You'll find that salt can make a little bit of a difference there. Not a lot, but, but there's a, you know, small places where we can work with salt and that's gonna really help. Now, some other things that we're not, or at least one other solvent that we're not gonna, we're not gonna work with, but that I wanna just bring to your attention is DMSO. Um, DMSO is primarily is is really uh, in my opinion you know most safely used externally, uh, but I will talk about it as a solvent and I will talk about it as a carrier as well for external uh, applications. And it is by some people and it is you know it is used internally as well. Uh, I do not ascribe to that person. I think just just to be uh, you know I think it's always best to be on the side of safe side, especially if you you know if you make a living or have any kind of a you know a, a um, professional medicine making. Uh, situation, you know, you have to be really careful. DMSO is not FDA approved uh, for internal or external use with, with humans. However, externally, I think you can get away with a lot uh, that, that's absolutely safe and as long as you're careful and how you do it. But we will talk about it because it's an amazing solvent as well. All right, so we talked about some of the solvents that we're going to be using. We're going to talk much more in detail about why we're using those solvents, what solvency is, what is a dipole moment, what are some of the different ways that we can look towards polar and nonpolar solvency, how does heat affect solvency itself, and some of the other uh, sort of kitchen level or apothecary you know, um, level uh, different extraction techniques that we can use, as well as some of the more advanced extraction techniques that are out there. Okay, so let me go through some of the equipment that we're going to be using as well here. All right, first and foremost is, is probably the simplest thing in the world, and that is just we want a pot that we can heat uh, oil in. Of course, we, we want more than one if we can. We want a stainless steel, uh, preferably pot, and then we want something that we can, we can do a water bath in. 
that is something we're going to use a lot of. It's a safe way to be able, the safest way uh, in a kitchen that I know of, to be able to heat our alcohol if we're going to heat alcohol. It's also uh, hot water and hot uh, ACV and hot honey. You know, heat with these solvents is, is literally the, some of the best solvency that we're going to get. Uh, and, it's, and it's great. It's an amazing way to be able to extract out of the you know what we need out of the plants and it's very simple so so this here is sort of the mainstay <laughs> you know something like this uh, you know pan or pans uh, to be able to heat in and then a pan is big enough to be able to do a water bath in a uh, and then a, um, a mason jar or some canning type of jar to be able to do a water bath in there as well this is going to give us safety if we want to be able to heat alcohol and we are going to do some of that we're going to heat alcohol and I'm going to show you how that works we're going to heat alcohol in two ways one is that we're going to evaporate it and one is where we're not okay so that's going to be a part of what we do um, we're going to send you this here we're going to send you one of these. I love these little funnels. These funnels are great uh, both with, I'm going to send you uh, inserts to them as well. Uh, uh, so uh, I don't have one made, but I'm going to send you some inserts, but they look, you know, we'll be able to fold and make our own, you know, coffee filter uh, inserts. So this is unbleached uh, coffee filters that we'll send. If you want to add those into the process, you don't have to. You can actually use this just the way it is. Um, it has a brush on it for cleaning as well, and you can sit this down. It's a two-part thing, and you can sit this down on pretty much any size of a container, whether it's a you know a wide mouth or a, or a, nor a normal uh, mason jar or any other normal anything else. It's made for coffee. This is going to be for our percolations, right? So this is a per percolation funnel. And we use this not just for percolating, because we're going to not be able to control the drip rate very well. I'll show you how we can control it somewhat uh, with some layering of filter paper in there. But it's uh, but it's mainly what I call an alcohol wash. Okay, so we'll be using that quite a bit as well. Uh, and if you if you want now, for those of you who have taken our um, You've taken our, uh, what do we call the, the, you know, the herbal medicine uh, introduction for herbal medicine for, prof for professionals called the HMP. Then we've sent you uh, small versions of a, of a uh, funnels that are jars that have been uh, repurposed. You know, that's not technically G CGMP uh, standards, but you can use it for home, you know, extraction. Certainly for what you're doing at home is no problem at all. Where we have a jar, where we've cut the top off of and sanded that down, and then we ha can put our filter paper in here, and then we put a lid on the bottom. I didn't put a lid. I've got a lid right here. So we take the lid itself. And we use that for our uh, stopcock to be able to sl slow the drip. Now we can go all out and we can buy uh, an actual stopcock. We can put a, a you know a cork in there and we can use a stopcock. It isn't any better and it's a lot more work. And uh, you know, so I'm here to tell you if you you know the lid works great. Sometimes simplest is best. And so you know we'll talk more about that. So. In that case, we're able to control the drip rate, and that's great. But you may not have one of those. You may not have one, excuse me, one of these um, jars or one of these funnels and not be able to do that. And this is a course designed to be able to use common uh, household kitchen gear. And so I don't expect you to have to do that. We're sending you what we can what we can use instead that will work just fine for those uh, per percolation washes and drips that we need to be able to do, okay? So that's mainly it. So uh, the only thing missing from here really is just, you know, filter paper. And you can see that. Here's what I like to use for my washes, by the way. And feel, you know, check this out. And we'll talk more about this. And I'm going to have a, a, uh, a bunch of links and, uh, you know, of all the different equipment that I talk about and use in case you want to buy some. But this is a Chemex. I use a bunch of these for a lot of different reasons. And I'll talk to you why the Chemex really saves my butt a lot uh, when it comes to extracting. It's just it's an amazing uh, tool to be able to use, and it's very simple, and it works really, really well. So that's we'll talk about that, but you don't have to buy one. Uh, you just might want to. By the time we get done with this, you might be really eager to buy some stuff. If you're like me and you kind of geek out on different equipment to, to be able to extract with, you might go out and spend money. Um, some things that we don't have to, you don't have to have, and you're not going to have, but I want to talk to you about, and this is, well, here's a heating mantle, which is very useful for, for our heat, for creating safe heat. You don't have to have that. I am going to use a an invection uh, a stove burner, which is very safe, and I'll use that, and we'll talk about that a little bit, but you don't even have to have that. Uh, I prefer that you do your heating over at least an electric and not a gas uh uh, heat just because we don't we want to get away from a flame source if there's any alcohol involved but uh, but but other than that uh, uh, whether it's invection or whether it's a um, you know heating mantle this is a great way to heat things up and then here I'll do a demonstration and show you what a socklet uh, this is my socklet 
extraction is in a couple of different parts here. It needs to be set up, but I'm going to do some sock slit extraction and show you what that's about. Uh, if I have one, and I think I will, I'm going to go probably go ahead and order one. I have a vacuum distillation. I have one here that's kind of complicated, and I don't want to go through setting all of that up because it's probably not something anybody's interested in. But they have, because of the cannabis industry, there are a lot of closed vacuum distillation units out there that you can get that are really good. And so it gives us the sock slit extraction type capabilities, but also adds into that a, a vacuum which keeps our temperatures lower than they are for the socks where we're not just cooking the heck out of things. So that, that makes a difference, again, more from cannabis. And we see that in cannabis because of the fact that you don't want to cook your terpenes and that end of the spectrum as much. Uh, so that's where that comes from, but it's also useful for our herbal, you know, our herbal extractions in general. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, over here we have, uh, I, I want to talk about a whippet, about a, you know, a whipped cream dispenser. And we'll use both, I'll, show, I'll do a demonstration showing you nitrous oxide and CO2 and how we can actually use that. Now this isn't, uh, this isn't a, a super critical CO2 extraction or anything like that. We're not getting those amounts of pressure. But we are going to build up a lot of pressure. We're able to get quite a bit of pressure, about 250 PSI, into this, uh, this particular tool here. And I'll show you how we can do that. And that gives us a really good extraction into alcohol, into water. We can make, uh, we can make um, formulas actually in here too. This is more for the taste side of spectrum things. We're gonna we're gonna find that more with our nonpolar. Uh, um, um, we're gonna find that with our terpenes, for instance, have a lot of flavor in them. We're going to find that with our uh, constituents where we're where we're concerned about that kind of flavor and uh, less so with the other end of the spectrum of things like tannins but it's very useful and it's a very easy way to get a strong a really nice strong um, extraction very quickly as well out of by using pressure and using gas okay so we'll, we'll talk through that and you don't have to buy one of these but you can get into this uh, for uh, you know under a hundred bucks or somewhere around a hundred bucks to include you know if you're including all of your your uh, gas also I wanted to say here on the Soxlet, you can get into a Soxlet for about a hundred and I last I checked, I think 120, 100 and so 120 bucks maybe if you're maybe 150 bucks if you include all of the stuff you need you need to get a fish pump and some of that and i'll go through all of that and i'll have of course uh, you know locations where you can buy that uh in a, in a handout for you as well so that you can see you know how to how to get into that yourself um this cannabis industry has given us you know things like the magic butter machine so this magic butter machine you know gives us a way to be able to extract oils it gives us a way to be able to extract tinctures uh glycerites whatever with uh agitation and with heat and with timed heat and and it's pretty handy for quick, again, for just quick stuff. It's like uh, we do that here sometimes when we need to make a small batch of oil. You know, let's say we only want maybe 8 or 16 ounces or even, you know, even 12, whatever, a little bit more than that we can, maybe 24 ounces of oil. And we just want to throw this in here and we can let it cook and plug it in for 8 hours and then come back and do that a couple more times, set our temperature, and we've got, you know, in 24 hours, we've got a really good oil out of here. It makes really good oil. Uh, same thing with tinctures. If you want to make a quick tincture, it's, it's, uh, it's gas type. I mean, it's, it's, um, you can block off any evaporation, so you're not going to lose your alcohol. So that's good, too. Now, sometimes we want to lose the alcohol, and sometimes we want to lose the water. We want to concentrate. We're going to talk all about that, too. <clears throat> We're going to make lactocarium, uh, and that's a really good example of evaporating everything off. We're going to take uh, lactuca or wild lettuce, and we're going to make lactocarium out of it this class. Uh, here, so here's a scale. You don't have to have a scale, but it's very useful if you do. So I would I would suggest if you can grab yourself, you know, get yourself a small scale, uh, something that you can weight measure, preferably uh, you know in grams. Uh, but again, if you don't have one, it's not the end of the world. We can do it more by volume and by sight as you're doing it, and you can kind of compare what you're going. And we're sending you herbs that are pre-weighed and pre-packaged, so we know what we've got. It's just good for something like lactocarium to figure out what your end result is and then know what your final ratio, what your final concentration is, okay? Um, sometimes I use this as well here. I see this sitting over here. So like a, just a syringe to be able to pull stuff off. So to be, it's sort of a way to decant off the top uh, more easily. Uh, so this is most of the things. Hold on, I think I'm missing a couple of things. I'll come right back on it. Okay, a few other things that I meant to talk about that I didn't have in here, I had to go grab, sorry. Uh, one of them is a hand a stick blender, so this allows us for the emulsification part of things to, to work 
You don't have to have one of these, uh, but it's but I'm going to use one and, and kind of show you on that. We can use, you can use a blender. We can use other ways of, of being able to mix up. We can even do it by hand if we want to, and that's fine, but I but I will be using one of those. Also, a thermometer, I like to be able to check temperatures, and that's important uh, for a lot of the things that I'm going to be showing you, but it's not absolutely critical. You don't have to have a thermometer. I prefer the IR type <clears throat> thermometer if I can get, if I can use that because it's a lot simpler, but you can use a candy thermometer you can use you know any other form of, uh, of, of cooking type thermometer that you have will work as well I would say that you know there's a, a, you know kind of a spectrum between things we don't need at all but I'm just going to show you in case you are interested in, in working with them uh, for future use and then things that are kind of good to have and then things that you absolutely need to have okay so the only thing that you absolutely need to have honestly is a pan and some mason jars you know that's in terms of, of the materials that we're using uh, and then we're going to send you the you know we're going to send you the funnel and we're going to we can do everything with just that ideally though if we have a thermometer that's kind of a nice to have if we have a um uh you know if we have a uh, you know some sort of something to be able to to stir things up with like like this it doesn't have to be this but some way to blend that'd be nice to have um if you have a coffee grinder that would be nice to have uh but those that's it you know so really all you need to do this class is just going to be a pan or pans and a mason jars and the rest we send you okay uh, last here is also a percolation you know just a coffee percolator and i want to show you a little bit about how we can work with a coffee percolator both for alcohol and for water uh, extraction as well uh, to kind of get some some interesting results off of that as well so we're using a lot of different techniques here a lot of different uh, machinery a lot of different tools and a lot of different solvents but the key here is to be able to of course this 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 course is designed to be able to for anybody to work in their kitchen with just common kitchen appliance type stuff and be able to end up with far more potent uh, medicine than you are making with just using your standard you know maceration tincture or even percolation tincture or you know whether it's fresh or dried herbs uh, or whether it's you know maybe you're doing just glycerides we're able to move all of these and and and, uh, and work with all of these together Another herb that we'll be working with is milk thistle. And not only are we going to be talking about the difficulty of getting some of the constituents out of uh, the silymarin in particular, some of those, those different uh, constituents that are found in, in silymarin uh, out of the milk thistle itself, and the steps that we can go through to try to, um, to increase that, but also why we use it in some of the different formulation. And I'm sending you some herbs, in particular berberine containing herbs, to be able to formulate with that and with another uh, another constituent that we'll be extracting out of red clover to be able to increase the, the bioavailability of berberine, for instance, into the bloodstream, across the gut wall, into the bloodstream for something like a urinary tract infection or even a, even possibly a, um, a respiratory tract infection, somewhere where we need to get the herb into the bloodstream, the berberine particularly in the bloodstream. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that, and then we're going to do some of those extractions as well. So those will be some of the herbs I'm sending in order to extract, and then we're actually going to formulate on top of the extraction as well and, and explain why we're extracting a certain way in order to be able to formulate a certain way. Okay, so hopefully that was useful as a short introduction to some of the tools we're going to use. Now what we're going to do next is we are going to put stuff together and we're going to start off with some of the different extraction techniques that, that we can use and go through just kind of a a step-by-step -step, um, what is it that we're talking about when we're talking about a decoction you know there's several different definitions of what a decoction is and and not not that any of them are, are, are right and, and any of them are wrong necessarily but what is it that we are looking for when we're doing a decoction and why do we do that and then how do we work with glycerin for instance in a decoction and should we do that or should we do that separately do we do it do we put in the glycerin completely afterwards so we're going to talk about some of the fundamental concepts around extraction and heat and how we put those two worlds together to be able to make the right uh, balance and the right uh, order in which we are extracting the constituents from our medicinal plants to give us the strongest possible result that we can get and the most uh, pure 
form of that plant that we can get in most cases. There will be times where we're going to talk about how we can actually leave certain things out that we don't want, some different toxic properties of it. We're going to do an elderberry syrup, for instance, that's going to be complete. We're going to work through from ACV and honey to glycerin to water uh, and really work through all of those stages and end up with an ACV, I'm sorry, with, a, um, with an elderberry extraction that is incredible. It's going to blow your mind if you're not really used to doing elderberry extractions that way. Uh, so that gives us a full spectrum. Uh, then we're going to do some things where we take away all of the solvent completely, like lacticarium, where we take it away completely. And then we're going to do a lot of things where we do a partial. We, and maybe we'll do alcohol first. Maybe we'll do water first. It depends on what we're trying to get out of there, and it depends on what some of the most important constituents are in there. So again, solubility is one of the most important concepts that we can carry with us into and through this course with us, and we'll talk much more about that as we go.